program. I'm Millicent Walker. We begin with, with Zimbabwe's main opposition party movement for democratic change, MDC. They have appointed an acting president following the death of its leader, Morgan Jangarai. Well, Nesson Chamisa, the party's former deputy, was no nominated interim president as hundreds of party supporters gathered outside the headquarters to grieve. The party says his last comes at a crucial period, just months from the elections. lost a comrade who was our best foot forward, a comrade who has been taking charge of this movement for the past 18 years, a man who has changed the face of politics in Zimbabwe, a man who has redefined politics on the African continent, a man who has not just been a statesman, but a man who has also been a patriot, a man who has been a democrat, a man who was everything, an icon, a revolutionary, patriotic, all rolled in one man. This is the man we have lost. It's not an easy moment for the country, for the party, for the leadership. But what we can assure you is that his legacy is very much in safe hands at various levels. We also hear that diplomats, government officials, friends, as well as well-wishers have gathered in Johannesburg to hold a memorial service for the late opposition leader, Morgan Changarai. In a press statement, the party urged all Zimbabweans friends in South Africa and the world to honor the man who gave so much to the struggle for democracy in Zimbabwe. A former Prime Minister of Zimbabwe, Mr. Changarai, died in South Africa where he was being treated for colon cancer. He was 65 years old. The new South African President, Cyril Ramaphosa, is set to deliver his first State of the Nation address today, a day after he was sworn into office. He is expected to set out his priorities and plans for the economy and end the corruption scandals which forced his predecessor, Jacob Zuma, to resign. Given the deep divisions in the governing ANC, analysts say President Ramaphosa is set to tread on a delicate path. His election as president, which was unopposed in parliament, has prompted a wave of optimism among South Africans hungry for change after nine years of economic stagnation and alleged corruption scandals under Jacob Zuma. Well, we'll be talking with our South Africa Bureau Chief uh, shortly, uh, but let's go over to Kenya, where a Kenyan MP, Alfred Keter, has been arrested on suspicion of involvement in a multi-million dollar scam. According to local media, Alfred, who represents Nandi Hills, was taken into custody this morning. Central Bank of Kenya's head of communications, Wallace Kantai, said two other people, Arthur Ngilo Sakwa and Mudat Saburali Chata, had also been taken into custody. They are accused of trying to cash fake treasury bills worth 633 million shillings, about $6 million. Mr. Keta, a member of the ruling Jubilee Party, has found himself at loggerheads with its leadership in recent times. Staying in Kenya, a woman has been sentenced to 10 years in prison for coordinating a petrol bomb attack on a police station in Mombasa two years ago. In her judgment, senior principal magistrate Diana Muchachi said there was credible evidence that Hania Saga communicated with one of the three women who carried out the attack on the police station. The court found that the pair kept constant communication until five days before the raid. A forensic report reveals that Tasnim's laptop had offensive literature, some of which were published by Abu Drago, the famous cleric who was widely believed to sponsor activities by Islamic militants al-Shabaab in Kenya. And more than 8,000 people are on the verge of starvation in Mozambique after one region's crops were largely destroyed. About 100 hectares of farmland in Mutaze, southern Maputo province, were wiped out after being hit by rain shortages and pest infestation. Head of the Mortazi administrative post, Isabel Tabisa, says the situation is critical, particularly as the main crop destroyed is maize, the region's main staple food. <laughs> 